Hi, welcome to the Signal Path short episode. I was doing some cleaning around the lab and I thought I would share with you my experience with the Deoxid product uh, series. Now, pretty much everybody's heard of Deoxid. They're from CIG Laboratories. They've been around since 1959 and Deoxid is considered the gold standard in the industry for contact cleaners and uh, lubricants and solvents and so on. And in fact, when you go to their website, uh, you may feel overwhelmed by the amount of different products, uh, applicators, and different applications, in fact, that these guys support. They, do, they make so many different chemical uh, products that they have specialized and highly dedicated product lines for very specific tasks or more generic, like the ones I'm holding right now, uh, for the general cleaning and uh, improving surface of metals. Now, if you even go to Amazon, which you can purchase it, and I'll provide a link for that as well, uh, you can see they have a 4.8 star rating for this particular uh, product in my right hand here. And there's no surprise. I mean, everybody knows about these guys. And I have a very tough test for it, which I'm going to show you uh, in just a second. Now, uh, the, the, D, the Oxid D100 is particularly intended for uh, maybe more um, older equipment, some vintage audio, or some things that have maybe more uh, built up of corrosion and, and dirt on them that you'd want to clean up and improve the connectivity. Now, the D5 is a generic metal on metal contact cleaner. Now, it does more than just cleaning because it also seeps into the surface roughness of the metal, creating a better contact, conductivity contact between two surfaces of metals. And this is particularly useful if you have metal surfaces that continuously rub against each other and they come and go in contact and you want to always have a repeatable contact. That's what I'm going to test, which is the toughest thing you can uh, test this on. And in fact, I've already failed to do that with uh, alcohol and other products in the past on my decade resistor here. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what this guy can do and what the actual problem is. So my problem is I want to clean my old uh, seven decade resistor box and this is from General Radio. This is an old unit but a very good one and I want to use it you know as just a, a good standard for resistors in adjustable decade resistor. Now when once I open it you see that uh, this is obviously plated metal on metal contact so uh, if you're not able to clean it very well you won't have a repeatable measurement and this is where it's quite difficult and a tough test uh, for the deoxid because this is more than just making you know a connection it has to be perfect each time and the same each time and that's why I'm going to try it on this one and um, I tried cleaning this with alcohol I spent quite a bit of time with q-tip going over all the connections before I had the deoxid and uh, I unfortunately you know I, I go over here and I go back and each time it's off by you know a couple of ohms back and forth so it, it just didn't work and I I haven't applied the deoxid to it yet and I'm eager to try it on and then we go and measure it and see how repeatable it becomes and whether we can use it and uh, then I will give my thumbs up to this as well. And just to uh, note something else, this is not, I, I don't get anything from the sales of their products or anything like that. This is just for me to try out these two and see if I can solve the problem that I have. And in fact, the links that I provide uh, for you to go and buy are not traced back to me. They're just direct links to Amazon and direct links to their website. So I get nothing from the sales. This is not in any way uh, paid advertisement or anything like that. This is just, I'm going to try it out and see if it succeeds. I, I don't even know. It's going to be a surprise for me as well. Well, here's a look inside my decade resistor box. And as you can clearly see, the construction is done with using wire bond resistors. And these are resistances that are made of just the length of wire wrapped around. And depending on the gauge of the wire, as well as how many turns, you get a different resistance. Now, the smallest resistor, which is 0.1 ohm steps, are made by these little jump wires there. Now, you can imagine that if the contact resistance of the rotary switch is in the same magnitude as the resistance 0.1 ohm that we're trying to achieve or if the variation is much larger than 0.1 ohm which it is in this case then this decade is completely useless it could even be that the first two are completely useless because you have so much variation so both resolution and accuracy is down the drain now as you go further up the contact resistance for this point may not be as important but it is important if you want to maintain the smallest value over here. This is why all of these guys have to have excellent connection, repeatable connection. This is why it's such a tough test for deoxid in this particular case. Now, if you take a close look at, for example, this one, you can get an idea of what those contacts look like. There it is, and if I go and rotate this, you can see how the plate at the bottom will be rotating and making contact with varying one of those uh, various pins that are connected to different sections of the 0.1 ohm resistors. So that's where the uh, critical contact is. Now this is when it goes further because there are contacts that are bottom too. 
which are difficult to see. So I'm going to have to spray uh, both the top and the bottom to make sure that I can get a good uh, contact. Now, this is one of the other scenarios where a spray is basically very important because I have no real way of reaching the bottom. Uh, in fact, they have um, products like this that will give you a flexible tip. So once you install it, you can then have a tip that you adjust and it will kind of stay in place to, for a hard to reach places. In this case, I won't need it for this, but you can imagine in situations where it's difficult to reach the point that you need to spray on. So you're gonna save this for future use and I'm gonna go ahead and start spraying this, uh, which is uh, you know, really quite straightforward. I'm just gonna go ahead and go around and apply this spray you know, in different places. For cleaning now, I'm not going to do all of this on camera, I'm just going to go around, clean it up, come back and show you, and then hopefully we do some measurements and see how it performs. Alright, let's also get a little bit down into these different sections here. This makes it very easy with the spray to reach all the connections, and I really want to make sure that we get all of them uh, quite nicely done. And it's pretty easy to use, nothing surprising, yeah, pretty nice. And I'm also going to take a couple of minutes just turning all these guys, you know, making sure that the dioxide the liquid reaches all the points in the contact, making sure we get some friction and move the uh, fluid around. And uh, let's see what is going on with it. Looks good. Doesn't smell like anything, which is kind of interesting, but now we're going to test it. And let's not forget that we need to clean the contacts for the terminals just as well as everything else. Well, it's time to do some measurement. Now, what I've done is I've set the whole resistor box basically to zero. You can see all the individual knobs are set to zero, so we would expect zero ohm from this unit by itself. Now, of course, there is going to be resistance from this cable over here, and that needs to be calibrated out. Now, I've connected it directly to my multimeter over here, and this is the Kitley DMM7510, which is the best multimeter I have here in the lab and we can configure it to take out that extra resistance. Now, because this is a two-wire measurement, we're gonna select the two-wire measurement over here, and under the settings, I can, first of all, let's change that to five power line cycle so we can get a more stable and accurate measurement there, and we're gonna turn the relative on, and now it's basically set to zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna step through 0.1 ohm steps, which is the smallest division of the decade resistor box, and see what we see, and if it's you know good and uh, predictable. Let's go ahead, first click, and check it out, 0.1 ohm, that's pretty good. 0.2 ohm, in fact, you know what? Let's go over here so we can see this. 0.3 ohm, 4, 0.5, 0 0.6, there's 0.7, 0.8, pretty nice, 0.9, very good. And 1 ohm, and back to zero. So you can see it's uh, very good, uh, very predictable, nice steps. Let's, let's jump to something higher, let's try 10 ohms. There's 10 ohm, no, no problem. That's very good, look at that, 20, 30, 40, 50, I mean, that's a, that's a lot of zeros there. 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, and back to zero. You can see the zero goes back to be pretty uh, close to where it was before. Let's try something, uh, again, large, let's try one kilo ohm. One kilo ohm, and look at that, how, how accurate this thing is. And now that I have one kilo ohm, I should be able to change the digit with the smallest uh, division nonetheless. So I'm going to go ahead to the 0.1 ohm steps and change that. And check it out. We can easily see 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 0. And you can see how repeatable this measurement is. So let's uh, mess it all up again. Let's just, you know, turn randomly everything a few times. A whole bunch of randoms and then let's just go all the way back to 0 again. I'm gonna turn everything back to zero and see how good we can get back to our zero position. Sorry, I gotta get all of these guys back to zero. And there's a zero, I mean, this is great. I have to say, I, it never used to do this. It, it was always off every time I turned it, you know, there's a couple of ohms here and there, but it's very accurate. So let's try 10, 10 kilo ohm. There's 10 kilo ohm, very nice. Let's just jump to 500 or 50 kilo ohm. There it is, 50 kilo ohm. No problem, and now uh, we can of course go to the highest division we have, which is a 100 kilo ohm steps, and here's a 100 kilo ohm step, and I can go all the way to the highest value you can do, which is a mega ohm. So you can see that it works quite well. I'm really happy with this result now, that uh, this, this cleaning process uh, works so well. Obviously, I'm, I'm not gonna show you, you know, changing it a thousand times here on camera, but I tried it quite a bit before, and I was very happy with the repeatability. This has been sitting in storage 
uh, for years before I even got it. So uh, being able to clean it and, and revive it and use it by just simply spraying it is, is fantastic. So I'm, I'm very happy with that. And I'm also going to save this uh, other unit here for some other surprise project I have in the future, which is going to be quite nice. It's uh, different than this one. And uh, we're going to try it out and see if we can uh, revive it and revive some other instrument. But I got to say, I'm pretty happy about the way this works. Very nice. So my thumbs up. And if you like it, let me know. Check out the description. I'll put a link to these if uh, so, you know, it's pretty easy to find. But you know, just you can take a look at the product and, and purchase one of these for your cleaning needs or any of their other uh, products that they have. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And uh, like I said, the short videos will not be charged to Patreon, only the regular length videos. So this will not be charged, of course. And I hope to see you soon.